Welcome, welcome, welcome to a special Thursday night edition live. We're going to talk about all things Eclipse tonight. What does it mean to you? What does it mean for our world? Is it a biblical sign from God? Is a setup for disaster? Is somebody going to take advantage of this moment to cause something really bad to happen? We're going to cover a lot of ground tonight. And then if time permits, we'll have questions at the end from you on the live chat. If time permits, right now, let's go. The Eclipse Show, everything you wanted to know. Let's go. On April 8th, you could have a chance at seeing something that many have never seen in their lifetime, a total solar eclipse. And this one is unique, so you really don't want to miss it. If you've never experienced one before, just take it from me, someone who has seen one, it is worth every single moment. So let's talk about where this thing is going to be. Well, the 100% eclipse coverage area will hit land in Mazatlan, Mexico. It will make its way through Mexico up into Texas, passing right over major cities like Dallas. It will go up into the Midwest, going directly over Indianapolis and Cleveland, pushing up into the Northeast, going over cities like Buffalo and Syracuse, and then making its way up into Maine and then eventually ending in Newfoundland. And that's just part of why this total eclipse is special, is the millions upon millions of people who will have the opportunity to see it. Oh, yeah. It's going to be incredible, y'all. <clears throat> so we're, gonna, we're just going to really break it down tonight. Right off the bat, thank you so much for everybody's watching on YouTube and Rumble. If you have not smashed that like button, go ahead and do it now. And uh, just so that way you can sit back and enjoy all the information we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, nothing helps us more. It doesn't cost you anything, just a few seconds of your time. Smash that like button on YouTube or Rumble. That's the only place we are live tonight, whether you're watching live or on the replay. We are not on Facebook or anywhere else, YouTube and Rumble. So let's talk about this eclipse tonight. Uh, the eclipse is going to happen on April the 8th. I think most of you probably knew that. It's called the Great American Eclipse Second Edition, and that's very, very important. Uh, it's going to happen on April the 8th, and my family... Uh, Sandy and I will be traveling to an undisclosed location that will have totality. And if everything goes right, we're going to be in a place where we would, should not have any obstructions to see the totality. Uh, and, and it just happens to fall, and I think it's very exciting for the big picture family, that it just happens to fall on a Monday. And of course, you know our biggest and longest show that we do is our two-hour news show. Sandy and I do it together every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. Well, we will be doing our show from the location of the earlier in that day viewing of the totality of the eclipse. We'll be broadcasting live at different times throughout the day on April the 8th. So if you can't make it to totality, uh, if you can't travel, then tune into the big picture because we're going to have a lot of information if everything goes right, there's no internet outages. I mean, come on, we're talking about the sun here. So there could be all kinds of crazy things could happen that day, which, which we'll talk about tonight. But internet provided, uh, we will be doing uh, live breaking news throughout the day. And we will do our live show from somewhere in Arkansas. Actually, I don't even know where in Arkansas we're going. I'm just going. So somewhere in Arkansas is where we're traveling to, which is in the line of totality. Now, seven years ago, my family traveled to Georgia, which was in the line of the previous total Great American Eclipse that came across the United States and only touched the United States. And that's why it was called the Great American uh, Eclipse. And seven years ago, it was an incredible moment. So I went back and I looked at some of my pictures. My phone was not the greatest phone in the world, did not have the greatest camera in the world. But I was just sort of reminiscing about it, and I just thought I'd just throw a couple of pictures up here. Uh, this is me <laughs> getting ready throughout the day with my special Eclipse glasses, hanging out there in Georgia, getting ready with all the other people to see the Great American Eclipse of 2017. And it was a sight to behold. In fact, like I said, I didn't have the greatest camera in the world, but I was really proud of my little Android camera that I had on my phone that day, because this is a picture that I took of totality right at the moment 
that it was going to totality. Now, now you'll notice if you've never seen totality, it's not like what you would think. You, you see the sun, you see the sun that is orange, and you just imagine that the rays coming around it would be orange. Well, when you are in the realm of totality, you will see that it is not orange. It is white. Uh, and the white, it's almost like white phosphorus light fire burning around the the moon that is standing between the the earth and the sun. Now, a little history about that 2017 uh, eclipse that Sandy and I uh, and thousands of others traveled to see was the longest period of totality ever experienced. Uh, let me back up and read this. The, the eclipse of 2017 is the longest period of totality, and it was experienced, If you, it might be shocking to know, was two minutes and 42 seconds. There was one place in America that saw the maximum totality of two minutes and 42 seconds. Do you want to take a guess of where it was? It wasn't where we were at because we didn't get the two minutes and 42 seconds, but it was Carbondale, Illinois. And this, this, this is literally on Wikipedia. This is not on some conspiracy website. You can look it up. You can research the length of time of the 2017 Great American Eclipse and the one city in America that had the longest totality of any city when it came across from Oregon all the way across through Georgia where we were at was Carbondale, Illinois. Now, why is that important? Uh, because that is Little Egypt. That is Little Egypt, okay? And that's where both of these cross. I'll get a little ahead of myself here, but I just thought it was a very interesting fact <clears throat> that I found researching that that the longest totality that was seen in America was in the exact spot where the other one is, this one is going to cross across the line and form the X right there in Little Egypt. So the, the eclipse of 2024, which is coming up on April 8th, will have the longest duration of four minutes and 28 seconds. That's a long time, y'all. Four minutes and 28 seconds to see something that probably many humans have never seen. And we, many that are alive today, will not see totality again in our lifetime because the next one that's going to come through, most of you are going to have to do quite a bit of traveling to see it. And it's only going to be on a small portion of America if you're watching this in America. You may be able to have totality in different places of the world. But the place of the longest four minutes and 28 seconds, this one is going to actually be in Mexico. Most places along the center line totality throughout America will see a duration between three and a half and four minutes. An estimated 31 and a half million people live in the path of totality this year compared to only 12 million in 2017. Think about that. An additional 150 million people live within 200 miles of the path of totality of this particular one. Now that's interesting because that means millions more have the opportunity to see this one and for a longer period of time than the previous one. During the total eclipse of 2024, there's some interesting things that are happening. And these are these are not just interesting things. These are things that make you ask the question, why is all of these things happening right now and around April 8th? All right, we're going to get into the biblical side of it, but we're going to get into a, a, a few other conspiracy things too that's going to make you think tonight. What is going on? What do they know that we don't know? Did you know that during, right at the moment, that it is just before we go to totality, during totality, and just when we come out of totality, NASA is funding a massive research initiative that is built on what they learned in 2017, in that eclipse, they are launching three rockets into the area to study this solar eclipse. And I'm getting this right from NASA's website. The projects, which are led by researchers at different academic institutions, will study the sun and its influence on the Earth with a variety of instruments, including cameras uh, aboard high-altitude research planes, ham radios, and more. In addition to those projects, uh, instruments were launched during the 2023 annual solar eclipse and will begin again be launched during the upcoming 
uh, solar eclipse, two spacecraft, listen to this, two spacecraft designed to study the sun's corona uh, will be launched into the view and move alongside the totality as it is going. What? Now, what are you studying? I mean, I don't understand why you have to launch rockets, drones, and planes to study the sun. Now, I know that I'm not a scientist, and there's people out there who will, will be able to pop off right in the comment section telling me exactly why. But it's interesting to me that they're spending billions of dollars to design rockets to send particular rockets that are deemed to be eclipse studying rockets that are going to be launched. Now, you and I, our, the way our minds work on the big picture is we, just got, we, we start saying, yeah, what's really on those rockets? What Are they taking advantage of something that's happening with the eclipse to hide something that they're wanting to do in space? We'll come back to that. we got a lot of ground to cover tonight. But I want to just go ahead right now and tackle, because I, I am a preacher of the gospel, and I'm telling you, I want to tackle some biblical perspectives of what is going on here. The Bible side of the eclipse. This is very important for you to realize this is not a random event. This is not just a random event. This is a sign from God. I want to show you some things in scripture. Now the Bible tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. Now you may think that the sun and the moon and the stars were created for light. Now, the Bible does say that they're used for light, but they were not created for light because light existed before they were created. So what is the purpose of them? Well, let's look and see what the Word of God says. The Word of God says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 4, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons, for days and years. But the key point here is let them be for signs and seasons. Let them be for signs and seasons. So God put them in the heavenlies for a sign, for, for us to know that he wanted to tell us something. I promise you this, God didn't do anything by mistake. And I want to show you something else here when he's talking about end times prophecy. Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, it says this. Excuse me while I get this out of the way here. Verse 25, and there will be signs in the sun. Remember what was said in Genesis. They were created for signs. Luke 21 says there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts felling them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now I don't have the scripture in my notes here, but I want to remind you of the scripture that I talk about so much here on the big picture, and especially in our Bible study, is that yet once more will I not only shake the heavens, but I'll also shake the earth. And when he, when he shakes the earth and shakes the heavens, he does that for signs. Signs. And he tells us there we just read that the earth will be in distress of nations and perplexity. That's huge. Now, let's continue on talking about this great eclipse. One of the oddest things about this eclipse is the widest totality of any, it has the widest totality of any eclipse that has ever happened in America. It has the longest stretch and, and, and has the widest falling upon the earth in darkness in totality that's ever happened in America. The first one in 26, 2017 went all the way across the America, America. And here's the interesting thing about this one. Not only is it the longest path 
I mean, the, the, not, not only is it the widest totality of any that has ever happened in America, this one comes from 2017, and this is a fact. Everything I'm telling you is facts. Six years, six months, and six days from the last eclipse. Signs in the heavens, 666, six years, six months, and six days from the last eclipse is when the eclipse will happen in April 8th. Wow. Now, this is mind-boggling. Why did they call the one that was seven years ago the Great American Eclipse? Why did they call it that? Because America had seen eclipses before, but not on that span. Because it was the first eclipse that had spanned the entire country and only America since, do you know when? This is, this is mind-boggling. Since 1776. 1776. Do you know what happened in 1776, right? We declared our independence as a nation. It is documented. You can read it anywhere on the internet. You can search it. You can find it. The last eclipse that spanned the entire continent of America and only America before 2017 was in 1776. So can you imagine George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin? You could go on and on and on. When they are getting ready to draft, they're drafting the Declaration of Independence. They're now declaring their independence, praying to God, saying that our rights have been given to us by God, by our Creator. And then all of a sudden, there is a total eclipse that spans the entire continent of what would become the United States of America. I mean, it spanned those, those think about this, it spanned all the way across territories in places that would become states that many people in, in, the, in the, um, the military at that time didn't even know existed. Wow. If you go back to the year 763 B.C., you find something very, very interesting even beyond that. 763 B.C., there's another major eclipse that happened. Do you know when that eclipse was? This was absolutely during the first day of Elul in the Jewish calendar which would have been precisely the time of the prophet Jonah. What? This eclipse happened, a total eclipse happened in the time of Jonah. A total eclipse happened in the time of our Declaration of Independence. A total eclipse happened seven years ago, and a total eclipse is about to happen again. Now, why is all that important? How does all that fit together? Well, think about this. If you go to Wikipedia, which I don't necessarily fully trust Wikipedia, but if you go to Wikipedia and you search the Great Assyrian Eclipse, and I challenge you to do it, the Great Assyrian Eclipse is also known as the Bur Sagal Eclipse. It is known as a solar eclipse that was recorded, I'm reading directly from Wikipedia, in the Assyrian eponym list that most likely dates to be the 10th year in the reign of King Ashurdan, the eclipse is identified with the one that occurred on June 15th, 763 BC. The Bur Sagal eclipse occurred over the Assyrian capital city of Nineveh. I'm not reading from a Bible commentary. I'm reading from Wikipedia. The Bur Sagal Great Assyrian Eclipse occurred over the Assyrian capital city of Nineveh in the reign of Jeroboam II, who ruled Israel from 786 to 746 B.C. According to 2 Kings 14.25, the prophet Jonah lived and prophesied, <clears throat> excuse me, lived and prophesied in Jeroboam's reign. The biblical scholar Donald Weissman has declared through his research that the eclipse took place 
around when Jonah arrived in Nineveh and urged the people to repent. I'm still reading from Wikipedia. I'm not reading from a Bible commentary. Urged the people of Nineveh to repent. Otherwise, the city would be destroyed. Now, this would explain the dramatic repentance of the people of Nineveh. This is the interpretation of Wikipedia as described in the book of Jonah, because ancient cultures, including Assyria, viewed eclipses as omens of imminent destruction, and the empire was in chaos at that time, struggling with revolts, famines, and two separate outbreaks of plagues. Now, when you go there to Wikipedia, you will find this map. Now, I know it's a horrible map, and you can't really see it, if I blow it up, it messes the dates. But you can see across the middle of that globe is the great Assyrian eclipse. This is from Wikipedia. This would have gone directly over Nineveh. Now, I think most of you probably know where I'm going. The 27 eclipse, 2017 eclipse, excuse me, happened on the first of Elel. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, let's go back to the Bible. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus said these, this word. Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees answered saying, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now, what in the world did that actually mean? You understand, stay with me, because all of this is going to fit in to the magnificent sign that we're about to see in the heavens that will preach and open our eyes to the moment of which we live in like nothing we've ever experienced in our life. When Jesus said that, the people of Israel would have understood the sign of Jonah to not be what we understand it to be. They did not have the privilege of knowing the rest of the story, the big picture. We understand that Jesus was saying, just as Jonah was in the belly of the well for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the ground. They could hear him saying that, but they, had, they did not have the experience of knowing what that really meant, the fact that it really happened. The time of this live stream right now, this is only a matter of days from when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And tomorrow, if you're watching this live, because we're live on a Thursday night, tomorrow is known as Good Friday. What would they have taken that to be? It was very well known across the land for generations to generations, they knew of the great Assyrian eclipse that happened when Jonah went to Nineveh. So when he heard, when, when they heard him say the sign of Jonah, they would have identified that with darkness. Oh, come on, y'all hear me. What happened on Good Friday when Jesus said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and he died? Darkness. Darkness came upon the land, the sign of Jonah. Now, do we do not have a record of an eclipse happening that day. So we don't know exactly what happened. It's probably just supernatural. Some people have estimated that, you know, the earthquake could have caused so much dust and de debris that it, you know, darkened the sun. God is absolutely capable of just moving whatever he has to do in front of the sun. We don't have a uh, historical record of an eclipse, but we do have darkness. And we do understand that what happened when Jonah went to Nineveh, that was a sign that caused an entire city that was heathenistic and demonic to repent. It was the words of Jonah and then the, the accompanying sign that followed his words. You've got 40 days to repent. The clock is ticking. 
Come on, are y'all hearing me? Now, I think most of you understand. Most of you have studied enough. You've watched enough videos. You probably already know this, but some of you may not know this. That this particular, the, 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 by the way, let me back up. The 2017 eclipse, when it came across America, it came across seven cities named Salem. Seven cities named Salem from Oregon all the way across into the southeast. Well, what does Salem mean? Salem means peace. It's where we get Jerusalem. It means peace. So the 2017 eclipse crossed seven cities named Salem. This eclipse will come up from Texas and go all the way up through and into Canada and will cross seven cities in America named Nineveh. And one of the cities is named Jonah. So it is going to cross seven Ninevehs and one Jonah. Wow. So what happens when this when this crosses, this is what happens. This is the actual path of the 2017 eclipse and the actual coming path in a matter of days of the 2024 eclipse. X marks the spot. Now, there's a lot of discussion that I'm going to have tonight about that X and where that X is and what is going on in that X. But I want to remind you one more. Look at the one that starts up there in Oregon, goes all the way and comes out near Georgia, South Carolina, crosses seven cities named Salem. The one that's starting in Mexico, climbing all the way up into Canada, crosses seven cities named Nineveh. And Jesus said, the sign that I will give you is the sign of Jonah. And Jonah went to Nineveh and darkness came. Now, if you really want to get crazy, y'all, let's get crazy with this. You can't make this stuff up. The people that named the cities that we call our cities now, some of them might have known something, but most people didn't know. They didn't name their cities based on celestial things they knew was coming. Right in the middle of that X, let's put it back up again. Right in the middle of that X, you know what is there? Two things is very important right there in that X. Number one, there that is Carbondale, Illinois. You remember that? That was the longest totality from the 2017 eclipse. But Carbondale also has the name of Little Egypt. And we know that one of the ten plagues was darkness. All right? But something even more important is right in the middle of that X is a city named Rapture. What? Rapture. Now, I'm not predicting the rapture is going to happen on April 8th, but it could. I think it's at least going to make some people look up. And the Bible says, look up for your redemption draweth not. Wow. Okay. Y'all still with me? Smash that like button if you haven't already done it. Come on, smash it, smash it, smash it. Help me out, help me out, help me out. Help me build the big picture fam. Now, let's talk about how incredible of a miracle it is that we are able to even see a solar eclipse. In order for us to see what we're going to see on April 8th, listen to how God designed this. Remember, remember we started this program. If you came in late, we showed you in the book of Genesis where God said, that the sun and the moon and the stars are for signs. Before they were ever defined to be for light, they were designed, they were declared and, and identified by God to be put there as signs. Signs to who? Now, if you believe in aliens and little green men, you might think that they're signs to all of them. But let me just show you why, just another nugget of why I believe we're special. Now, we got other shows we do on aliens where there's interdimensional demons, fallen angels, and all this. Another reason why I believe we are special in the eyes of God. In order for us to see what we saw in 2017, 
what George Washington in 1776 saw and what we're going to see in April 8th. Listen to this. All right, so we're standing here on this little blue rock called the earth. The sun is 400 times bigger than the moon. Wow. When you hear what I'm about to tell you, the, the intricacies of the creation of God, the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, but it is 400 times further away from the moon. And because of this, because of those exact numbers, 400 times the sun, larger than the moon, and 400 times further away from the moon. This is the only way that a full solar eclipse could be viewed by finite little ant beings. When you, when you fly over you, from an airplane, look at the airplane, you might see buildings, you might see cars, but most of the time when you're in cruising altitude, you can't even see people. You might see something you think is a person. But that little dot, that little insignificant thing called a human being in this grand solar system has been granted by God to be able to see signs in the heavens. Not just solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, but the constellations and, and the way things move in the heavenlies, how they preach to us. It's very, very powerful when you begin to realize that God said before they were for anything else, they were for signs. Now, when you study, study theology and study the, the biblical study of the solar system, you know that when God speaks through the sun, he's usually speaking to nations. When he speaks through the moon, he's usually speaking to his people. When I say speak through them, I mean using it for signs, pointing it to certain things, judgments, shiftings, changings. And when he speaks through the stars, he's usually speaking to the inheritance of Abraham. This is commonly known. Now, the eclipse, I want to remind you, happens on, y'all ready? April the 8th. Well, some great preachers out there. I'm not taking the credit for them. I'm still in their, their thunder. But several great preachers went through and went to every book and found chapter 4, verse 8. And I think it's very important because this one's why I think this one is the one we, we're, we're supposed to be guided to. Is because remember, where does it X? One more time, let's throw that up there. Where does it X? It X's in little Egypt. Now, the reason that's important is because we go back to the Word of God and we go back to Exodus chapter 4, verse 8. Remember, 4 8, April 8th. Listen to what Exodus 4 8 says. Then it will be if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be that if they do not believe these two signs or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river, pour it on the dry land, and the water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land, which is judgment. Now understand, we, we know this is dealing with Egypt. And this thing's going to X on little Egypt. But let's look at it one more time. Then it will be that if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, 2017, I'm giving you an opportunity. Peace, Salem. Peace, peace, peace. I'm giving you an opportunity. Seven, I'm giving you seven years of peace to get your act right and get your act straight. Because in seven years... I'm bringing another one going across the other areas, going across seven Ninevehs and a Jonah. And I'm going to X in little, little Egypt and rapture. Two eclipses in seven years, marking an X. In Exodus 4, 8, 4, 8, April 8th, fourth month, eighth day, Exodus 4, 8 says that if they did not heed the first sign, maybe they will believe the message of the latter sign which means 
the second sign. Is this unbelievable how all this is fitting together? And when you put that with the fact that it is going to cross in little Egypt, in Exodus 4, 8 says, they, if they don't believe the first sign I gave them, maybe they'll believe the second sign. Wow. Are y'all enjoying this? If y'all enjoying this, let me know. Now, it gets even wilder. That's, that's, to me, that's enough. If I was to close the show right now, that's enough to say, my God, we need to get our heart right with God. Lord, have mercy. We need to get a heart right with God. Jesus is coming. Get right with God. But that ain't all that's happening on April 8th. That's not all that's happened during this brief window of a few weeks of our life. Do you know that at the same time that the longest totality eclipse that we've ever seen in our lifetime and most of us will ever see again, there's also a comet called the Devil Comet. The Devil Comet could possibly be viewable during the total eclipse. A Devil Comet? Yeah. As the April 8th solar eclipse looms closer, another celestial object has garnered attention. Comet 12P, Pons Brooks, also called the Devil Comet, because of its horn-like silhouette, is making its first appearance in 71 years. The comet is visible in the sky about an hour after sunset, but spotting it requires binoculars and a small telescope. It's a very unusual coincidence. Yeah, I love those words. It will hover about 25 degrees from the sun during the upcoming eclipse. Pons Brooks is prone to outbursts, which makes it more difficult to predict how bright it will be on April 8th. NASA says it has had several outbursts in recent months, including one in July that rendered it about 100 times brighter. The explosion sculpted the comet's coma, its fuzzy outer layer, into a striking spiral shape. Comets, when nearing the sun, develop tails, which make them easily identifiable. If your horizon is clear, maybe near a lake where there's an unobstructed western horizon, you can spot it. Classified as a periodic comet. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question when you hear this. Pons Brooks follows a trajectory that brings it within the proximity of the sun every 20 to 200 years, akin to the renowned Halley's Comet. NASA characterizes comets as Cosmic snowballs made of frozen gases, rocks, and dust. Now, ask yourself this question. As, no matter how old you are, has most of your life, have you not heard of Halley's Comet? Is it not even become a part of our vernacular to always say, well, you know, that thing only comes around like Halley's Comet? It's become a part of who we are. It's become a part of our talk. But this article says the devil's comet is akin to Halley's Comet and comes around just like it. But nobody's talked about it. In 71 years, we, for 71 years, we knew it was coming. And we knew it was coming around the time of a solar eclipse? What? And it is possible? Can you imagine being in totality, looking up during totality, and already being in awe of something that is not many people in the history of the world has ever been able to see with the naked eye. And then you see a comet with horns like a devil. And this comet is six years, six months, and six days from the last comet. This is insane, y'all. Get right with God. Oh, and by the way, did you know that just last week we had a lunar eclipse that fell on Purim, the Jewish holiday of Purim in Palm Sunday? We had a lunar eclipse. We got a devil coming in the sky, and the moon's getting ready to block the sun in a few days for a total eclipse. Wow. But that ain't all. There's more. Wait, wait. 
like that TV commercial. There's more. Do you understand that it is also? Oh, well, let's just read the website. It's, 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 it's crazy because we got a, we got a horn comet. We got a total eclipse. And guess what else we got? This, this futurism.com, which is not a Christian website. This is a website that studies the solar system and studies AI. Says this, you may be able to see, listen to the word here, twisted towers of fire during the eclipse. They didn't say nothing about this in 2017. It says this may be quite a show. Amateur of professional astronomers alike are rolling with excitement for the total solar eclipse that falls to over North America on April 8th. An extra reason to try and catch this rare solar event, according to an excellent new piece in space.com, is because our star is currently near the peak of its 11-year solar cycle and during the totality of the eclipse, the moment when the sun is completely covered, plunging the world below into strange darkness, it's likely that you will be able to see, get ready for it, gigantic towers of explosive plasma leaping off its surface. What? Goes on to say in space.com, if we get lucky. A coronal mass injection will present itself as a twisted spiral-like structure high in the atmosphere in the sun. It's not a sure thing that there'll be a giant coronal mass injection or flare during the brief window of totality. Whether it be small or epic eruptions that float away from the sun's surface remains to be seen. There have been a few examples of such prominent eruptions over the past few months, each of which have been given a great show in occurring during a total solar eclipse. But it's worth noting that the eclipse will still provide a view of stationary non-eruptive prominences that'll just be smaller and closer to the sun's surface than they will be without mid-eruption. Y'all, can you imagine, can you imagine seeing a horned comet and then you see, you see the total eclipse and then you see Giant spiral to towers of fire shooting out of both sides are all around the sun. Y'all, this is going to be something that you do not need to miss. If you can make it to totality, you need to make it. If you can't, you need to be watching the big picture because we're going to show you the totality. We're going to show you the reaction of the people. We're going to be doing a live show that night, our regular Monday night show on April the 8th, and throughout the day, we're going to be covering it. And if I can work it out, I'm not promising anything. If I can work it out, I'm going to do a live broadcast of totality. If I can work it out. Don't know if the camera will fry if I do that or not. Wow. Now, I'm about to show you something about to happen with CERN. This was given to me right before I went on the air and I had to double check this. Not that I didn't trust the source, but I wanted to. They sent, sent me an article. I need this was so this was so unreal that I had to verify this, and I had just enough time to verify what I'm about to show you. It is absolutely incredible, y'all. But watch this 30 second commercial because some of you might want to partner with us and help us do what we're doing to bring you this information. And after this 30 second break, I'm going to be back and I'm going to show you something that CERN is going to do on April 8th as well. It's crazy. Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglan.com and make a one-time gift, or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store, connect with us on our social media links, and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. And yes, thank you so much for those that have chosen to become partners with us through our website, LarryRaglan.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, as promised, I want to show you something that was sent to me about April 8th and CERN. That the article went on to say that there are certain components that they have shut down and they will be warming up 
and reactivating, ladies and gentlemen, on all of all days, April 8th. Now, I want you to notice at the top left-hand side, the corner of this website, this is the actual CERN website, home.cern. This is not some site talking about CERN. This is CERN's site. And in, in their news section, in the topic of accelerators, I won't read this, a lot of scientific garb here, but the headline is, the accelerator complex gears up for action after the yearly winter maintenance break. And it just shows you a lot of data. I'm going to get all the way down here to this part right here. It says, let me zoom it in just a little bit more. If I can, let's see. I want to make sure y'all can read this good. It says this. It's crazy. The injector chain is in big, blah, 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 blah. It talks about all the, and I don't understand any of this. All that I saw was this in the highlighted purple right there. Physics in ISOLD downstream of the P5 booster will start up again, basically, on April 8th, followed by the SPS North area on April 10th. The antimatter factory is set to start delivering antiprotons to its experiments on April 22nd. And look what it's called. The Awake Facility. The Awake Facility. Why is it called the Awake? What are they trying to wake up at CERN? And why, of all times, it's a winter shutdown. Winter's been over for a while. Why is CERN continue, starting back the collision of certain things on April 8th. That's just strange to me that they chose that date to reignite those levels at CERN. Is that crazy to you? If that's crazy to you, and if, that's, if, that, if that just blows your mind and you're enjoying this, all you got to do is smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, help us build this big picture family. That's it, man. That's all you got to do, and that will help us more than anything in the world you can help us do. Now, that's not all, y'all, because there's, there's other things that are happening on April 8th that you need to know about. You need to ask yourself this question. Why are city after city after city in the line of this totality declaring emergency declarations? Some of these cities and counties have called up the National Guard for April 8th. Remember. Mexico is going, I don't know if I told you that yet or not, but Mexico is going to have the, there's a city in Mexico that has the largest totality of this one. The largest totality, uh, in a, it's going to range anywhere between uh, just under four minutes and all the way up to four and a half minutes along the United States. But you're talking about less than five minutes. And this is what they're saying. They're saying it's because these little small towns have never seen an influx of these people. But the declarations are things like this. Some of these news, local news are running them. I've watched multiple videos across Texas. Multiple counties are saying, this is what they're saying. Make sure you have two weeks of food and water, batteries in your flashlight, gas. Make sure you fill up your car for, for a solar eclipse. Now, there's a guy that's on the Internet that I believe is you know, for those, you know, that are preppers and living off the grid, you know, there's a bunch of sites out there. This guy's really, I really like this guy. And his channel is basically about prepping and living off the grid. But he's been putting out some very interesting things. And I want us to listen to what he has to say here about April 8th and what he is being told and what is actually factually happening. Oma and places in Ohio is that well we're doing a state of emergency so it allows us to have more um, you know feet on the ground troops on the ground basically in a way that we can help with crowds there's gonna be so many crowds coming to these small towns and that you know we just want to make sure that we can handle the crowd control handle the traffic okay 
you know, you're like, okay, that, that sounds that sounds reasonable. You would think that they, you know, like for instance, our county has what we call an emergency management protocol and local people and local volunteer firemen, they come together and they help with events like that. With tons of tourism coming in for some reason, therefore then what happens? They handle the situation. But why are all these governors and mayors and, and city administrators wanting National Guard there? Now, there's been some speculation to show that there's been specialists called in for, for different um, things that the government does. And they're saying, well, we're going to put them boots on the ground just for safety and protocol. They're also telling their people, these mayors, these states, these governors, are telling their people it may be wise to have, you know, maybe two weeks worth of food put up. And, and if you don't have that, maybe go buy it because it's good to prepare because there's going to be so many people there. We may not have enough food. We may not have enough restaurants. So we may not have a place, enough beds to stay in uh, for this event. Now, have you ever heard that? I mean, we're talking general tourism, a natural phenomenon happening with uh, the solar eclipse. So you're thinking, okay, big group of people coming in to see a beautiful spectacle. But... That, that usually brings happiness. That usually brings, uh, well, we want to prepare for the crowds, but ultimately we're going to bring food trucks in. We're going to, we're going to make it big and try to, you know, economic development. And instead, they're almost doing a precarious warning. I mean, there's been declarations where they want National Guard at these locales. And that could be just traffic. I could be putting on just my tinfoil hat. But I want to read you some of the comments that, that have come out from all right, and then one more video. I know that some of you are a little bit behind on the video, so I think when you catch up, you'll know that I got the audio fixed. This is an update from him that came out four days ago, and then I got one I got one more comment. I'm going to tell you about something that continues to even get crazy. The coming weeks, again, is rolling into April. They keep going back to April, keep going back to April. This is from China. This was early last year. They were stating the best times to look at his invasion in, in Taiwan is going to be March or April. Well, now they're starting to escalate. We're seeing ships, we're seeing Air Force moving in. Now, that's not the news story. Two news stories. All of a sudden, we see this major attack in Russia. Not from Ukraine. It's from ISIS. And remember, this is the same ISIS that Trump took out of power. So now they're showing a resurgence under Biden. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, go back and do your research. The U.S. put out a warning for all Americans to get out of Russia. They never warned Russia, but they said there's a terrorist attack coming. Now, it's also come out now that they knew it. The intelligence department knew it in Washington that this was going to take place. Now, that's a little shady. It's weird that we knew it and didn't warn um, Russia, even though we're in war. Just the fact that ISIS is back around, you'd think that we would warn that. It's amazing how we always go back to that. All right, so I could show, I could show you some more, but for time purposes, I'm going to come back and just going to tell you. He goes on to talk about that, the, that there are people that are saying that part of these declarations are happening because it is very difficult to find anything on the Internet about this because it's being throttled, this question. And I have to talk in code here because of one of the platforms that I'm on tonight. One of the platforms lets me speak a little bit more freely, but the other does not. But there are implications that there are, we talk a lot about the border. We know, we know the big picture family is awake and they know the invasion that has been happening on our Southern border. Many military experts believe that there, that there is already multiple cells and organized groups of military-trained men from various countries, mainly China, spread throughout this country. I'm not trying to scare you to death. I'm trying to make sure that you're aware. Enjoy the eclipse. But this is what they're saying. You know, the Bible said, as I clearly showed you, that God said they're for signs. They're for signs in the heavens. And usually... Because we talked a lot about Jonah. If you're coming in late, go back and watch the first. We talked about Jonah and Nineveh. This eclipse is going across seven cities of Nineveh. And when Jonah went into Nineveh, it is a documented fact that the great Assyrian eclipse happened when he walked into Nineveh. It is absolutely a biblical and historical fact. So you, And then you know that it's six years, six months, and six days. You just begin to see 
It's a wake-up call of judgment coming. So people's already going to be a little antsy. And, and, and if you've ever experienced totality, it is a spiritual thing. I'm telling you, it is a spiritual experience. When you look up and that totality happens, there is no way to explain what it looks like, and there is no way to explain what happens on earth. Creation just changes. It goes dark. The temperature drops 10 to 15 degrees in a second. Lights come on. People start weeping and crying because they're overwhelmed by, by just creation. And the intelligence is saying that when that moment happens, and hopefully, hopefully, the reason they're calling up and declaring these emergencies is because they are preparing to make sure they're protecting the people that nothing happens. I declare in the name of Jesus, we enjoy this eclipse. We see the horn comet. We see giant spiral towers of fire. And it's the most incredible experience in our life. And we take video, we take pictures, we talk about it for years to come, and nothing bad happens. But if you think about how terrorists work, and you think about what just happened in Russia, and you think about what happened in Israel, and you think about who has been invading this country, they don't care about a solar eclipse. They know what that's going to be to, to Americans. We're going to let our guard down. Everybody's going to be looking up. Nobody's going to be looking around. Everybody's going to be looking up. So here's what I say. Look up, but be aware. Look up and be awake. That's why we say all the time here on the show, don't be woke. Make sure you're awake. I think it's interesting that CERN is restarting a program in their collider on April 8th called the, the Awake System. Something is being awakened in the spirit realm. Whether anything bad happens or not, that's why I said the title of this show is, is our world being shifted into a whole new world. I think it is. I, th I hope in the name of Jesus nothing bad happens, but I believe there's a shifting that is happening that is going to shift us out of the complacency that we are in now into an awareness. Now, can you stay with me just for a few more minutes? It's also interesting that the movie Civil War, and I want to show you this real quick, the movie Civil War moved up their release date to April 12th, which just happens to be a few days, the Friday after the eclipse. So when we go into that week, we begin it with the eclipse, all that we've seen, our minds are still processing it, and this movie Civil War is moved up on purpose to that Friday called Civil War. Now, if you follow this channel, you know that I have talked about this movie, that I believe it is predictive programming at the highest level. I believe it is intended to incite uh, opposition and war and, and the title, Civil War. I think it's also interesting that Civil War, if you'll notice on the screen, is a production of a company called A24. 24. We are in 24. Matthew 24 talks about end times. We are in 24. And it comes out in 24. Now, I've shown you one of these trailers, but they just dropped another trailer. And I want to make sure you see it. This is what is coming out the week of the eclipse. Citizens of America. People of the Florida Alliance. You gotta move! And the Western forces of Texas and California. Will be welcome back to these United States as soon as their illegal secessionist government is deposed. You don't know what side they're fighting for. Someone's trying to kill us. We are trying to kill them.
Now, do you think, man, I'm, I'm overwhelmed right now. Because I can feel it. Something big is coming. Something big is coming. It may be, it may be the Lord coming. It may be, I got a feeling it's going to be some bad times. Man, there's so much more I could tell you. Just little nuggets of that. This, this is the first eclipse that follows the entire path of the New, New Madrid fault line. I know solar eclipses don't cause earthquakes, but so many people have been talking about the New Madrid fault line. This one follows it. The other one crossed it. Guess where it crossed it at? Little Egypt. Seven years ago, seven cities of Salem, peace. Seven years later, seven cities of Nineveh making an X, riding inside a city called Rapture. The eclipse enters America in Eagle Pass, Texas. Think about this. Enters America in Eagle Pass, Texas. You ever heard of that place? Of course you have. That was the center of all the, the controversy over the, the southern border. The eclipse enters in there. The first eclipse of 2017 ended at the site of the beginning of the Civil War. This eclipse will begin at the place that the Civil War ended. Too many, too many signs for us not to know, to look up, for our redemption draweth nigh. Thank you to all of our partners that have been so good to help us and support us. And by the way, you're helping us go to this eclipse and to be able to do the things that we're going to do that that day. It's because of our partners. And if you're new to our channel, you saw it on the eclipse, you're like, well, I don't know anything about this channel, but you were blessed. Know that every Monday at seven o'clock, my wife and I do a live show here where we do breaking news from a non-woke perspective. And we break down the word of God verse by verse with a live Bible study every Wednesday night. Thank you for joining me on this special edition tonight of the eclipse. Can I just say this? I know I've hopped up a lot of things tonight. I didn't really mean to hop them up. I just wanted you to know the facts. But enjoy it. Know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Know that your heart is right with God. And go enjoy this sign that at the very least is pointing us to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. Get right. God bless you. We ain't woke, but we certainly are awake. Share this with somebody that might be interested in the eclipse and comment down below. And we didn't have time for questions, but shoot your questions down there in the comments and I'll answer them on a future program. God bless you. Have a great night. See you next time on the big picture. Thank you for that super chat. Y'all are not 